The other day I was on a call with one of our vendors and they shared a juicy piece of gossip. Another solar company had gone out of business. So I wanted to confirm it. I went online, Googled the, the company name, and sure enough, there was a news article. They went out of business, and I thought, well, let me just check their website. So I went to their website, and this was posted. I was, I couldn't believe it. Now, I don't know this company. I don't have any beef against them. But for me, it was just another reminder of how up and down the industry could be. And it got me thinking, are we in a solar bubble? Welcome to downtown Salt Lake City, Utah. Now, you might be thinking, why am I talking about solar in Utah? When you think about Utah, you usually think about snow or national parks, outdoors things, mountains. You don't think about Utah, but Utah is actually home to some of the largest solar companies in the country. And part of and the reason for that is a, a combination of tech, Silicon Slopes, right? It's one of the, the burgeoning tech, burgeoning, burgeoning tech centers in the, in the country and also it's the probably one of the, the the center of direct sales and so that combination has made utah a mecca for solar and so it's really interesting as you drive down the main thoroughfare or main highway i-15 you can just walk on the see on the side of the highway and there's a ton of solar companies it's interesting because you see the rise and fall of of well sometimes the rise sometimes the fall of a lot of different companies it gives you perspective so before i dove too deep into this video, I wanted to put a disclaimer out there that solar has done a lot for the economy. It's done a lot to provide jobs. It's the, the third fastest growing job in America, solar panel installers right now. Like that's a good thing. And it's, it's helping us reach a renewable future. That being said, there's there's also, just like any other industry, there's the, the negative side or the underbelly. A solar company has gone bankrupt. They will no longer produce solar panels. A massive round of layoffs. The doors were shut permanently. I don't want to be the one to blow the whistle, but if we're not willing to call out our own BS or call out the problems, how can we grow or, or get better? Again, I can't emphasize this enough. My goal is not to discourage you from going solar or from joining the industry. There are amazing people that are pioneering a better way forward but I think it's also important for us to be transparent about the the things or the hiccups in the industry and also give you the knowledge you need to do to navigate it wisely so that you can have the optimal experience while working with and in this industry let's start from the beginning so for the longest time solar was this really niche product that nobody really used sure Jimmy Carter put solar panels on the on the White House in 1979 I think all of us working together can assure the success to make solar energy a clean sure economical exciting part of americans lives but it wasn't until the 2010s that residential solar really started to take off the reason people started going solar was because it was cheaper to go solar than it was to pay their monthly electric bill and that's when solar really started to take off that, that adoption curve really started to hockey stick so this combination of user-friendly or, or budget-friendly product and service for the everyday consumer and a really business-conducive growth opportunity has created the next hyper-growth technology, and solar is one of the fastest-growing industries in the country. Think radios, TVs, cars, internet, cell phones, right? It's that, that hockey stick growth you see. So all of a sudden, you have this new technology, solar, replacing the old technology, the grid. And there's a huge upside to these technologies. And when you think about the difference between horse and buggy versus a car, or the library and the internet. You know, there's, there's huge upsides, but there's also what you call growing pains. And some of those growing pains in the recent history were called the dot-com boom and the mortgage crisis. And solar's analogous to those eras. But it's important for, for you to know and distinguish which companies are really here for you and which ones you probably want to avoid. So in order for you to have the tools to be able to do that, we need to answer what are key indicators of a company that I'd want to work with. First, we need to understand solar financing and accounting. So for personal or like family finances, you can apply one simple rule. Do you have more coming in than going out? That's how you stay afloat personally or as a family or just on a, an individual scale. As simple as that seems, if it was that simple, then why do some people struggle financially? There's more reasons than this one, but that's a big one, especially in America. The brilliant financial minds came up with this concept called credit or, or debt, really. There's there's good and bad debts. Like a, a good debt would be, hey, I need to own a home instead of rent. Like owning homes better. Well, it's hard to afford a $300,000 house. So if I can break that up into payments and finance it, that gets me on the path towards ownership. And that's good debt. There's also bad debt. And they literally made a movie called Shopaholic that plays off of this. They didn't even need any money. 
they had magic cards. I don't need to go over the examples, but you understand that like some people will take out credit cards or, or open a line of credit. And if you have too many lines of credit open and not enough to pay off those credit, all that those lines of credit, you can maintain that for a little while, but eventually those bills will come due and it can overwhelm an individual or family and that's how they go bankrupt. Solar is very similar. Let's say it, a home needs to go solar and it's cost $50,000 to do that. Now that's just an estimated cost for equipment, labor, the whole kit and caboodle, right? Most homeowners don't have $50,000 up front to pay for that. And so they'll finance it, break it up into payments just like a mortgage or a car. Now as a company, I have to foot all those bills, the equipment, labor, permits, et cetera, taxes to pay for that. I also have to use a financing vehicle to be able to put all these solar panels on a home. So that financing vehicle most often is a line of credit from a distributor or manufacturer. I get a customer that says, hey, I wanna go solar. Great, they get approved for a loan from a finance company and then I can go out and I can put a purchase order for material in. And then we install the system, which is the big cost, the equipment, the labor, all that thing, all that stuff. And then I can send a picture to the loan company and say, hey, we got the solar install done. Can you release the funds? The finance company will pay us and then we can pay off the vendors, the equipment, taxes, we can pay all, all the people off. A really common way that a solar company can go out of business is just like a, a, a homeowner that opens too many credit cards up. At first, you can sustain it. But if you don't follow good business, business and accounting practices, eventually all those bills will come due at once and you'll go belly up. All right, so we're gonna pause for a second. While we were editing this video, I realized it was getting really long and I was probably mansplaining. So I'm gonna give a quick review and then segue into the next section. Again, solar is the way of the future. Millions of homes are gonna go solar and billions of dollars are gonna be saved by people generating their own power. It's the way of the future, it looks bright. Just like any other industry, there's good companies to work with and not so good companies to work with. And sometimes the not so good companies don't even know they're not so good companies yet. They're just trying to do whatever they can to stay afloat, right? What I wanna do in this next section is give you the insider secrets, whether you're coming to work for a solar company or trying to get solar installed on how you can determine a good company from a not so great company. All right, we'll knock the easiest one right out of the park and that is price. So obviously there's the old saying of you get what you pay for. And uh, hence we're right here at the airport with Southwest because they're obviously a budget airline and a few weeks back they had an issue with their system and grounded a bunch of flights. And I think it was like 2000 flights or something got changed or moved around and people lost bags and it was crazy, right? Um, but you get what you pay for. Now, the problem with solar, there's not established brands like there is cars or airlines. If you go to buy a car, you know Mercedes is gonna be a better experience and more, and more costly experience, a luxury experience versus like a Honda, right? Solar, residential solar really hasn't even been around since 2010 and that's stretching it. Um, so there's not any established brands. You don't know which ones are, are gonna provide better service or not, um, but what you do know Know is the low cost ones probably are gonna provide a lower level of service. Part of the reason for that is because they don't budget in service for the next 25 years. Most panel manufacturers have a 25 year warranty. Most installers try to match that with a 25 year labor warranty. I can't tell you how many times companies have gone out of business and there's no one to service those panels anymore and the, and the homeowner has to pay for that. And the reason a lot of those companies go out of business is because they don't know the cost of servicing solar panels and solar inverters for 25 years, right? And so unless a company builds that into the price, so by definition, a more expensive price than somebody else, you're probably gonna be paying for services later. So my, my best advice is don't go for the high one, don't go for the low one, go for that mid-tier one, just like Toyota, that's probably where you get your most bang for your buck uh, for a solar installer. Number two, regulatory issues. Now, this one I wanna make sure I treat really sensitively because every market, every state is different. But one thing that makes solar unique is that one, there's a, a, a tax subsidy, a federal tax sub subsidy for 30%. And then two, each individual market and each individual utility treats solar differently. So I'll give you one, I'll give you two examples that are really well known that you can just Google in the news about to find out more. But um, both in Nevada, 
was gonna say Las Vegas, it's mostly Las Vegas, but Nevada and South Carolina had really solar friendly policies for a really long time. And then overnight, the utility was able to change those policies through legislation. And that regulatory issue really rocked a lot of solar companies. They put all their eggs in one basket. They, they were prepared for that. And that made a lot of them go out of business. Number three, bad reviews. Again, a pretty straightforward thing that you should think about looking, but you'd be surprised how many people go with a company that has really bad reviews because they just like their salesperson. The best way to find out if a company is doing well or not is just go with the online review of their online presence. If they have a lot of online positive reviews, they're probably someone you, go, you should go with. Obviously, every, co every company is not gonna be perfect. Most companies, especially ones that scale, will and even should have a couple of one-star reviews. That's just going to happen, no one's perfect. But if those companies respond to those reviews and, and trying to make it better, that's the company you wanna to go to. So that's just one thing to keep in mind. Number four, super fast growing companies. Now, a lot of companies like to talk about, hey, we're the fastest growing company in the, in the country. We're the, you know, the 53rd fastest company or whatever. But oftentimes that growth comes with some pretty not so great surprises. Usually fast growing companies can't keep, like they, they may be taking in new customers really well, but they're more off than not, they're old customers. They're usually ignoring them to focus on the growth, right? And the other thing about fast growing companies is it's harder to keep up with your accounting and books. And most, if not all of the solar companies have gone out of business, were in that super fast growing category. They were growing so fast, they couldn't keep up with the growth, but you want a company that's growing, maybe even a fast growing company, but not a super fast growing company. All right, the next set of these are more focused on people within the solar industry, but they also can, it's good for consumers to know to keep those like top of mind. M1 payments. Now this one is very specific to solar. So what an M1 payment is, is a milestone payment or another word for it is an advance. The finance companies to help solar companies get along a little faster, especially because cash flow can kind of be rough with extended timeline, extended install timelines, is they'll extend an M1 payment or, a, or an advance to a solar company to help get some of those initial upfront costs for permitting and licensing and other stuff out of the way. As you install solar, you're getting paid for the jobs you're doing, but you're also getting paid M1s. And so a trap a lot of solar owners fall into is their bank accounts start to look really big. And they're like, oh cool, we got a big bank account. That means I can take a, a distribution or withdrawal from my profits. But that's money that you're paid on for future jobs you don't actually have yet. And so a lot of companies will get in trouble because they're spending money that's actually not real money. On top of that, the sales reps will want that as well. So sales reps will ask for M1s and it's money that's actually not guaranteed yet because the install's not done. It's the job, the work's not complete. So these M1s, if you're not, if you don't have a really advanced accounting team to track them, or two, if, you're, if people are overly greedy with them, that wrecks cash flow and it can just destroy a company. M1s are something definitely need to watch out for. Avoid if you can, if, if they are part of the business, then just make sure the accounting is really strict on how you're tracking those. Dealer programs. Now, this one I'm probably gonna get a lot of flack for from the solar industry because they don't like to talk about this to the public, but a, a dealer program is where you, you separate the actual solar installer, the contractor, from the sales company. So the sales company is usually called a dealer. So. Again, like that Pareto principle, there's 20% of these dealer programs. They're out, they're, they're good ethical salespeople. They're setting right expectations, communicating with the customer, communicating with the installer, and everything works out really well. But there's another, that other 80%, you know, and, and maybe they're not doing intentional, they're untrained, or there's, there's separation between the, the install partner and the sales partner, and, and that can create a lot of friction, and usually the ball's dropped. I've been in solar for eight years, I've experienced a lot of them, and generally speaking, the experience from a customer perspective and from a sales perspective both, is the experience is much better when everything is vertically integrated, when everybody's on the same team, when everybody's doing the same on, uh, in the same direction. So if you're a customer looking to go solar, one of the important questions you need to ask and, and, and get a really honest, direct answer is, hey, are, are you working for the actual installer or are you separate? Are you, a, are you a dealer? And if they're a dealer, you're probably gonna wanna monitor your project a little more or, or maybe even be a little more bold than that and get a, get a quote or work with someone that works directly with that installer because you're probably gonna get a better level of experience or service. And that goes for the, the people in the industry as well, especially for salespeople. Um, I've just came back from a few conferences and I'm noticing more and more the trend is people are gonna are trying to stay vertically integrated. So when people are installing solar on homes, that end-to-end -end experience is just is better because everybody's on the same team, same expectations, same thing moving forward. And yeah, that's dealer programs. 
All right, to wrap this whole thing up, transparency and common sense. Our goal at Equals is to be transparent with everyone so they feel comfortable. And, and that's what I've noticed as well, is people that are trans transparent with me, those people I wanna work with, even if there's issues along the way, because it's business, it's not a perfect world, it's construction. You know, the, the permit office at the local county is gonna hold up my permit. That's not my fault, the company, that's not the customer's fault, it's just what we have to deal with. But if if you use common sense and say, hey, is this person being, is this company person being transparent with me, being honest and straightforward? Yes, that means you're working with a good a good company. My goal of this video is, is again, not to throw all these red flags up and blow the whistle so people are like, oh, hesitant, I wanna go solar. It's so that you can have confidence that I have a company that's giving me a really good price or, or I work for a company that gives me a really good, really good standard wage a great wage, they're good people, they're transparent, they have great reviews, they do consistent good work, and now you have some tools to be able to evaluate or, or bid and sort and find that 10%. And that's why I do these videos, even though they're, you know, they're, they're probably, we're probably sharing a little bit more than we would like or are comfortable sharing. We understand that as we're transparent and we, we try, we put ourselves out there, that karma will also return and, and help us, right? So we appreciate your time, like and subscribe, and we'll see you every Friday.